Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects quick tip scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to do batch text automation inside of your projects. Now the reason you might want to do something like this is if you have dozens or hundreds of text layers you need to change en masse, whether it be the font size, the layer scale, or you can even apply expressions or animation to all of them. Or they can be in like this case where all the text that we are dealing with is inside of several layers of pre-compositions. And this process goes hundreds and hundreds of times. And all we need to do is say, adjust the layer scale or the font size to make it look a little bit nicer. The script I'm gonna be going over today that I used practically in this example in a real world project is gonna essentially allow us to input uh, the custom font size and layer scale that we want. And what it's gonna do is apply that to the, all the text layers inside of this specific project. And I'm gonna show you how to basically build out something like this and go in and make these mass changes. So like in this case, if I wanted to do something dramatic, like change the font size to 500 of all of these uh, pre-comped text objects, all I have to do is run the script and it's gonna tell me when the process is complete just to make sure I know that it went through and did everything. And now we should see a nice update and the text is obviously a little bit too big, but the, the point stands that we can change the font size or the layer scale. And of course, all of this is enclosed in um, an app.begin undo group. So because we're changing hundreds of text layers, we can easily press Control Z and undo all of the things that we just did. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind you to hit subscribe down below, as well as the bell icon to be notified of when new videos are coming out twice weekly on Monday and Thursday on the channel. And down below, you can follow us on GitHub and Instagram to be notified of new coding projects and video uploads. And of course, don't forget to follow the Discord server where you can check out the scripting extensions, plugins, or general text channels. And here you can discuss scripting questions, extension questions, or any other questions you may have, or start collaborating and getting to know some of the local scripting community. So let's go over how I put this script together, uh, the process I went through, and how you can make batch automation text changes yourself. So essentially, I started off by defining, of course, the composition where all of these text layers exist in. So again, each one of the text layers in this particular composition are inside of a pre-composition and another pre-composition until we can actually access the text layer where we can make the changes. So the first thing the script needed to do was to go through and identify each of these sort of layers of pre-compositions so we could break it down and get all the layers we need. So what we do is after we've defined our main composition here, we loop through all of the layers and we're gonna check each time if the layer source is not null. What this means is that the layer that it's currently looking at has some kind of source over here in the project panel. In our case, all of these pre-compositions, they do have a source inside of the project panel that we can access. Then I check that that source is an instance of a composition, which plain and simple tells us that we have a pre-composition on our hands because we're looking at a bunch of layers the source of the layer happens to exist, and the source of that layer is a composition, which indicates it has to be a pre-composition. So I go through all of the layers in the composition, and I create an array full of those pre-compositions that we found. So what it's gonna do is go through and find each one of these pre-comps and store it in that array. Then again, we have another layer of pre-compositions within each one of those pre-comps. So I run another loop through all of our pre-compositions, and the layers within it because we're not sure, maybe it's layer one that the pre-composition is on, maybe it's layer three or four. We want to again just find the only pre-composition inside of, well, this other pre-composition. So again, going through all of the layers in our current pre-composition, what we're gonna do is make sure the source is not null, make sure it exists in the project panel, and then we're gonna check again if it's a comp item. If that's the case, we have our sub pre-compositions. So we have a whole bunch of sub pre comps now, which each of these sub pre comps contains all of our main pure animation and text layers. What we're gonna do lastly is loop through those and find the one text layer in each of them. So we loop through all of our layers in our sub pre compositions. And again, this can vary depending on your project. You could have five sub layers of pre compositions or just one. 
and we're going to check if the source text value is true because only with a text layer can you access a property called source text. You can't do that with a footage layer or anything else. So if the layer has the property source text, we know it's a text layer. And if that's the case, we're going to have our array called text layers here fill up with all of those text layers. So all those loops and everything there are basically just to read down into our project that specifically and find any of the text layers we need to modify. You could do the same process to look for other layer types or types of uh, elements in your compositions, but in this case, uh, this gets to our text layer very efficiently. So now that we have all of our text layers, we're finally going to create a function called change the font size and layer scale. This, of course, you can customize to be whatever you want, but in my case, what I have is a function that requires a whole bunch of layers, which again, we've gone through and gotten all of these text layers, and then we're gonna give it a custom font size and a custom scale. Now, whether you apply the font size and the scale is up to you. Sometimes I just wanna apply the font size on mass. Sometimes you wanna change just the layer scale on mass. A reason for not wanting to change everything is, for example, in my case, sometimes these inner text layers have expressions applied to them, based on previous presets and maybe we just want to change the font size since that's not really animated or has an expression applied to it. So what I'm doing is calling my function here where I actually am going to change the font size and layer scale and I'm giving the values 500 for the font size and 155 for the layer scale. Inside of the function itself, it's very simple. All I'm doing is running through all of those layers that we've gone through and already confirmed are our necessary text layers. And what I'm doing first is setting the time of each of the compositions for these layers to two seconds. The reason for this is the text layers aren't visible at zero seconds, and I just figured if I'm going to run through all of these and need to run any calculations, the text should be visible. So again, the first thing I did was set the comp time to two by grabbing the layer and the containing composition and setting the time to two. Then I'm going to essentially use the default way you change font sizes and font properties inside of After Effects. You create a variable called text prop and set that equal to the source text property of any of your text layers. Then you create something called the text document, which contains the value of the source text. And inside of the value of the source text, it contains the font size, the font, the stroke, the fill, how those are applied, and everything else. All we need to do is then say text document dot font size is equal to the font size argument we've given it, which in this case is going to give 500. Then to save those settings, we need to basically set our text property equal to this new text document, which has our updated font size of 500. Then again, lastly, you have the choice to change the scale if you want, which I've done here by saying Adobe Transform Group dot property Adobe Scale, and we're just setting that equal to a two-dimensional array with our scale value. But if you don't want to run it, you can just comment it out. And lastly, of course, you can apply an expression if you want. There are cool expressions out there that do cool things to text, and maybe you want to apply this to all of your text layers, and this would be how you would do it by just saying the property.expression, and then put in whatever your expression is. And that's basically how you can go through and do text automation batch processing inside of After Effects with a script. To recap, essentially what you need to do is look at the structure of your project and make sure you get all of the base elements you need to change. In my case, I need to go into several layers of pre-compositions to get to the actual text layer we need to change. Maybe in your case, you have some screen overlays and those are contained inside of pre-comps and pre-comps. You need to go in to those pre-comps and get the base layer element you need to change and fill up an array full of all of those elements. Then once you've done that, you simply can create a function where you apply the new values to all of those elements. In my case, I'm changing the font size of any text layer I give it, as well as the scale of the layer itself if I want. So let's run this one more time and do something crazy, like change the font size to a thousand. And let's go ahead and actually change the layer scale here just to be 100 flat. Now we need to make sure we're inside of the main composition, which we set up our script to work in, and we'll go ahead and run it. And once complete, we'll get the alert again, and we can go ahead and see our newly updated gigantic text. But since this has been enclosed in an undo group, we can easily press Control Z to undo all of those changes and start over and try and find the right value. 
And that's gonna do it for this week's quick tip tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, again, hit the like button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of when new videos are coming out twice weekly on the channel, typically Monday and Thursday. Down in the description, you can check out the link to follow us on GitHub for cool code examples, as well as follow us on Instagram to be notified exactly of when new videos are being uploaded. And of course, I can't forget to shout out the Discord. Make sure you join us there in the scripting, extensions, or plugin section, where you can ask any questions you have, leave your comments, or get to know some of the other scripters and plugin writers. And lastly, you can donate crypto to the channel now. In the description, you can check out the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and basic attention token addresses you can donate. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.